incompetent doesn't mean their narrative is <laughs> you're you're so right right it's just Obama the Broadway musical <laughs> yeah you're right they would have they would have basically put him and they would have been carving him out I'm not talking about Mount Rushmore but perhaps the level right just below just it a level right below <laughs> right it, below it. <laughs> unbelievable thanks buddy you, All you, right, you, have a good day, man. Uh, you too you nailed it Jimmy talent ladies and gentlemen Hi, Jimmy Talent. Looking forward to seeing you on the 4th of May when we have Almond in the Evening, another round of it, with the Heritage Foundation, uh, with Jim Carafano, Genevieve Wood, and none other than Senator Jim Talent. How you doing, buddy? Yeah, and uh, I think Genevieve will be the only sane person there. <laughs> uh, that's She's true. Outstanding. You're going to have to go to Almond all day somehow. I don't know how you oh, I know. yourself that in, but you're going to have to. And Genevieve is really something else. I mean, yeah she's, yeah, she's really a penetrating thinker. I mean, she'll be the uh, she'll be the adult in the room. Oh, so let me uh, let me ask you this: for you being involved in foreign policy, this must have uh, th- watching what went on this week must have been like watching porn for you. <laughs> I, I'm, I mean, well, well, I'm not saying that porn is a good thing to watch. I'm what I'm saying is because uh, yeah, well, I'm I wouldn't that. know. Jimmy, I, what I'm so. saying is this <laughs> is like foreign policy porn. Although, yeah. again, porn is a bad thing. I'm just saying that if it were a good thing, this would be foreign policy porn. Yeah, it's it, it's very interesting because, and I don't know if the president had all this in view, you know, when he when he ordered this attack. But I right. think it's accomplished a number of of good things. Um, I know for a fact that our traditional partners in the region, you know, Egypt, Jordan, Israel, the Gulf states, they breathed, breathed a huge sigh of relief because they said, okay, you know, the Americans are back and engaged again. And, I mean, that's tremendously important because it's those partnerships around which, you know, we can build a policy if we're able to do it you know, in the Middle East. I think it also had the effect of really making the Russians own this guy. Okay, so, you know, they wanted this. Putin's been um, establishing himself as the power broker, and I thought for a long time that one of the things we should do is say, okay, you want this guy, you own him. You defend him. You support him. Because this is an area that's really of secondary interest to Putin, and right. I think the costs may well begin to outweigh the benefits to him pretty soon. Particularly, right. this could also get him to the bargaining table and result in some kind of a soft partition of Syria where we have, you know, an Alawite region, which uh, Assad controls because the Russians prop him up. Uh, you know, the, the, Turk, the Turkmen, the, um, you know, the, the, the Kurds in the, in the east, and then some Sunnis in the south and southeast. So... You know, that would be better than what we have now. So I think this is this has moved us forward on a number of fronts. Now, he's got to follow up on this, and I know that they're, you know, preparing options and all that, but I think it was a very good first step and, and probably had a bigger impact even than the president envisioned when he ordered it. Well, and, and down uh, to even the issue, like, for instance, we're seeing a lot of people, and I don't mean to be critical of these individuals in terms of, calling them names, but the only thing I can come up with is simpleton. Because you have people who don't see the long term. And I'll, and let's just take China, for example. It's like, he, he called them a currency manipulator, and now he's going back on that and trying to play nice. He's dropping his campaign promise. But keep in mind, if you look at the smart people and how they're looking at what China's doing right now, they're already adjusting their monetary policy without Trump, you know, even though Trump has dropped the, sort of the label of currency manipulator, China is already starting to manipulate and, and or, or change its monetary policy, even without right. Right. And I, the direct no, threat. He, he, I, this is another area where, where we're going to have to have, even more so here, because this is a long-term competition that we've entered with them. And so, you know, we need a sustained policy over time. But I think what he has done here is the Chinese are now paying attention. Uh, I'll give you another example. There was an article that appeared in uh, one of their, basically one of their party papers, which contained one of the strongest warnings ever to North Korea. 
and it said, look, if you do this test, this next test, uh, we're, the, the, the Chinese society, I think the way they refer to it, is going to have to support the most stringent U.N. resolution ever, including cutting off your oil, which they really need from the Chinese. And so I think uh, what Trump has done here by you know, this tough talk regarding North Korea is he's emphasized to the Chinese uh, that this is something, as Churchill put it, that up with what uh, we will no longer put. Right. And uh, the whole point was to increase the costs and the consequences to the Chinese of supporting this regime. So I think we're, we're seeing a number of favorable effects. The follow-up has to be there, and I've emphasized in a column, you know, he's he got to drive through this plan to rebuild the military because being strong is the foundation for all these efforts around the world. Right. Uh, but but what yeah and and what China is doing watch out for the Chinese I know smash what China is doing though is is they're already they're draining their liquidity they are raising interest rates now and, and obviously uh, as CNBC pointed out their loan growth hasn't really stemmed necessarily but you can already see them trying to play a little more nicely on the world economic stage and and to me. That's people are saying. Well, yeah, but he he said he was going to shame them, but you don't have to. He knows how to do this. He 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 basically threatened them or talked tough about them, and they adjusted. Much like we saw with NATO, much like we have seen with with other individuals around the globe. It seems like you know the 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 tough foreign policy talk, whether it be in terms of military strategy and monetary strategy, seems to be working. Yeah, well, we have a leader now who is prepared to defend our interests and who is feeling his way, figuring it out. Uh, I think one of Trump's, and he's gotten off to, and he's, he's wrong-footed in certain respects. You know, I think we all saw that. Yeah. One of Trump's strengths is he is willing, as we know from his show, he's willing to make changes. And if something's not working, he changes it. Um, and, you know, that's a good quality in a president. Um I like his team now. I think they're they're getting more coherence, uh, and I think we're going to start seeing uh, some sustained policy in all these areas. And again, the fact that we have a president who's going to defend our interests um, is is just by itself, yeah, a, a tremendous signal to be sending all over the world. And um, you know, the right kind of military action. This was a low risk action. It was not going to suck us into some or had a low right. risk of sucking us into some long term thing really can send a very good signal. Remember when, I'm old enough to remember when Reagan sh- uh, shot down the Libyan aircraft that was, that was intruding on, um, on other countries on NATO airspace, yeah. right? A, a small-